pulling better over the top of them. They're really pretty, y'all. Mmm. Yummy! This is delicious. This is a very easy recipe if you got a kitchen egg mixer. There's no reason why you can't mix these up and have them for Thanksgiving. Crazy. How like flaky they are. It's because you poured that butter on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are good. Mmm. Mmm. Let's eat these. Supper. Let's see supper. We're making homemade rolls today. They're light, fluffy, crunchy on the outside, and buttery. And boy, are they delicious coming out of the oven. We're going to start making our rolls and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put a one and a quarter cups of whole milk in a container. You need to put it in the microwave and it needs to be lukewarm just like a baby bottle. So um, it took mine a minute and 15 seconds to get to that temperature. Make sure you stir it good and make sure that just the top is not warm and the bottom's cold. So you can test this on your... Um, arm just like you would a baby bottle and it should be just barely warm feeling so it shouldn't be hot now we're going to heat up our mixing bowl under some hot water so that when it gets down in there to activate the, the bowl does not cool it off too much we're going to use the regular paddle for this we're going to pour this in We're going to put in a teaspoon of sugar, which helps it activate as well. Five tablespoons of butter softened. I'm going to put this in the microwave just for a second. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to pull up my mixer and barely turn this on. butter five tablespoons don't leave it in there till it's really really hot or it's gonna be too warm for the yeast fill up your bowl at the bottom and make sure your mixture's not too hot for the yeast now we're going to sprinkle the yeast into this mixture to activate it and it's going to mix up just for a minute let it sit there for a couple of minutes now if you have quick activating yeast there's really no wait so you don't have to wait the two minutes you can just continue to follow to the next step otherwise you do need to let it activate for a couple of minutes now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the mix it, mixer on we're going to add one egg yolk Put in one and one half teaspoons of salt. And now we're going to start putting in our flour. We're going to put in two cups of flour and then we're going to beat it really well before we start adding the remaining flour. This is bread flour. It, it activates the yeast all-purpose and you can have your flour ready before you start instead of being like me but I have to show y'all what to do now we're going to add this make sure it's on the lowest setting Do is 
I'm gonna put the dough hook in and we're gonna start adding flour. And it can take up to two more cups of flour, so we're just gonna go ahead and sift that much. Just leave a little bit in the sifter for um, your dough out on the counter. Once you get it out of this mixer, you don't want to part, put hardly any flour to it. So you don't have to save a lot. So we're just going to start adding a little bit at a time. You can use a scooper if you want to. the sides and let all of this extra get down in there because I think it's about right. It should be sticky, but manageable, okay? And we're gonna get this dough, put it right here on the counter, and all we're going to do is knead it a couple of times, and you're gonna do a quarter turn and do that at least in 360 degrees circle for just this one. Because in a few minutes, we're supposed to knead it for eight minutes, but we're not gonna do it, the mixer is. This dough is perfect. So we're going to let it rest for 10 minutes right here on the counter. And then we're gonna come back. Okay, our dough has rested 10 minutes. So we're gonna take the dough, still a little sticky on the bottom. We're gonna throw it in the mixer, pull it up. And we're going to beat it on the low setting for eight minutes. Okay, kneading dough is hard work. And when you're like me and you have lymphedema, you're glad you've got a KitchenAid mixer. So this has been in here for eight minutes. It's done just perfectly fine on its own without having to put any, anything in there. So we're going to take it out. And we're going to uh, knead it. Now I'm going to show you how to knead dough in case you don't have a mixer and you're young you got plenty of energy. Um, you're going to take your dough, you're going to push it away from you, fold it. Well actually you turn it a quarter turn, you fold it, you push it. Turn it, fold it, push it. And you use your palms and you move it across the table when you push it. That's it. So this dough is ready. Um, it's in a good, to me, it's a good consistency. And uh, I don't really think I need to keep uh, 
kneading it or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this. We'll start with half. So then I'm gonna put this in half again. Half and half. Then you're gonna pick up each piece and you're gonna roll it into a ball, tucking the edges underneath it. And you're gonna place it in your buttered dish, which I have not buttered, so let's butter this dish. I only want to butter the dish about an inch up on the side, because you want the dough to be able to cling to the side as it rises, okay? So don't butter it all the way to the top. So you're just gonna pick this up Roll it, tuck, tuck the seam underneath, and sit it in the pan. And you're going to do them all that way. If you think one's a little bit too big or that you didn't uh, do it evenly, you can take some off and give it to another one, like I just did. So you're just going to continue to roll these and put them in the bread pan. ready and we're going to make a few in a muffin pan. Pan. I'm going to butter the bottom and not try to get the top at all. So I'm going to do six sections and then with each section I'm going to cut it in three pieces. And then we're going to roll them. It's a baby roll. All right, our last one. So we've got the little circles. And some of them are bigger than others. I might trade out some big ones for little ones. Just to make it look more even. Okay, now we are going to put this in a proof. Um, I've got my oven on proof. So um, it is the right temperature for rising the dough. You don't want to rush your dough rising. Don't turn your oven on, you know, so that it's a warm temperature. You want it to rise slow, okay? So we're just putting a little plastic wrap over the top and we're going to place it in the oven, but I'm gonna get both of them ready before I do that. Rise double in size. All right, our smaller rolls have proof. These are still rising. I want them to rise a little more. We're gonna be patient with those. And these, we're gonna take the top off of and get them in the small oven and bake them. You want to be careful. You don't want to cause your dough to fall. And so we're going to start them. They're going to bake about 20 minutes. This oven we're putting at 375, but if you were baking them in a large oven, you would bake them at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And um, we'll see you in a minute. Our rolls are ready to cook. So I took them out and put the oven on preheat. And I'm going to let the oven preheat right quick. We're going to bake these at 400 degrees. All right, we're gonna pour butter on these. And I'm gonna do half with butter and half with sesame seeds. I'm just gonna do half and half. And you can tell by looking at these rolls in this pan, since I had them in my oven, the ones that were on the outside, these were next to the smaller rolls rising. They didn't get as much heat, so they didn't rise as fast. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of egg wash and um, Put on these other ones. Make sure you do it lightly. You don't want to smash them. And we're going to put a few sesame seeds on these. That one I smashed. All right. So you got butter and sesame. Put it in the oven. 
400 degrees for about 20 minutes. All right, let's get them out. Look good. It's so funny how they how they rose, and you can tell the ones that we brushed actually um, it dented them a little bit. Let's pour them better over the top of them. Let's try to pull this apart while it's still hot, y'all. Just see how pretty it looks. It's when bread's the best. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot. Oh my goodness, it's nice and crunchy on the bottom. Nice and crunchy on the bottom. Very soft in the middle. You usually want to pull your bread apart, but you can't pull it apart when it's so hot, you're going to get burnt. I just smashed it. They're really pretty, y'all. Mmm. Yummy. This is delicious. These are better than the these. I prefer these. So, um, and they take less time to make because you roll in a bigger roll. Um, they take a little longer to rise, but we're not doing a double rise. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. This is a very easy recipe if you got a KitchenAid mixer. There's no reason why you can't mix these up and have them for Thanksgiving. They're very flaky on the outside. They have a really good flavor. I'm going to let Chris taste them. Crazy. That's How delicious. flaky they are. It's because you poured that butter on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are good. Mmm. Mmm. Let's eat these. Supper. Let's eat supper. All right, y'all. Whatever you do, make sure you melt that butter and pour over these because the bottom of them is so flaky and that butter gets in there and they're just absolutely amazing. Your family and friends will be like, you are the bomb. So, um, these were really easy. They weren't hard at all. The You just got to have the patience to let them rise. So, I suggest you try these this Thanksgiving. Make a lot of make-ahead recipes and save your oven for these delicious rolls. So thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did.